the Treasury opened up its uh, 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 window to help. They pumped $105 billion in the system and quickly realized that they could not stem the tide. We were having an electronic run on the banks. They decided to close the operation, close down the money accounts, and n announce a guarantee of $250,000 per account so there wouldn't be further panic out there. And that's what actually happened. If they had not done that, th their estimation was that by 2 o'clock that afternoon, $5.5 trillion would have been drawn out of the money market system of the United States, would have collapsed the entire economy of the United States, and within 24 hours, the world economy would have collapsed. to whom you lent 2.2 trillion of their dollars. Will you tell us who got that money and what the terms are of those agreements? We, would, we explain each of our programs. In terms of the terms, we explain the terms exactly. We explain what the collateral requirements are. We explain what To the whom did you explain are. that? It's, it's on our website. Yeah. Okay. So all that information is available uh, in our commercial paper program. And who got the money? Hundreds and hundreds of banks. Any bank or, that has uh, access to the U.S. Uh, Federal Reserve's discount. Will you tell us who they are? No, because the reason that is counterproductive and will destroy the value of the program is that banks will not come to the... Well, isn't that too bad? detect uh, threats to, fi to financial stability that may be emerging. So um, would I say there will never, ever be another financial crisis? I think things have improved, but then I think there are gigantic holes in the system.
it is not an exaggeration to say that the end of abnormal unemployment is in sight. And it isn't only the unemployed who will feel the difference. A great number besides will be taking home better money each week. The grand experiment has begun. If it works, if expenditure on armaments really does cure unemployment, I predict that we shall never go back all the way to the old state of affairs. Good may come out of evil. We may learn a trick or two which will come in useful when the day of peace comes. There, there's not even oil filters. So when the motor blows, what do you do? Buy a new truck and build the government. $75,000 truck. They wouldn't even have a spare tire to fit it. And we had to blow it up. And they didn't care how the burden did because the government's paying for it. We knew that every day that a vehicle broke down, we would have to destroy it. And these are maybe $80,000 vehicles, maybe $100,000. You know, they're expensive trucks. We're burning fuel in front of the Iraqi people. We're not really doing anything to help, and we just have to follow the orders. It's going to be, in my opinion, a very bright future, because if we really want to change things, we have to change the economics. And through all of human history, if we look at the economics of violence, it's been very profitable to engage in violent activity. Conquering a neighboring tribe, stealing their crops, taking their land, the industrial age, we needed force to be projected on a massive scale to protect our railroads. The holders of capital could easily be extorted the coal mine, by taxes, by organized labor. But as we move into the information age, Diffie and Hellman came up with asymmetric cryptography, public key, private key encryption, which is a vital component of Bitcoin itself. And some of the original cypherpunks realized the economic implications of this asymmetric cryptography because the laws of the universe, they bless nuclear power and nuclear weapons. But they also bless the laws of mathematics and this asymmetric cryptography. And at the end of the day, no amount of violence will solve a math problem. You cannot direct a nuclear bomb at a math problem and solve it. That is just not how math works, period. And with asymmetric cryptography, it has changed the economics of violence. This is a tectonic 